Now, here's another batch of vaccines that uh, Dr. Speaker analysed. As we see, these ones are Pfizer and these ones are Moderna. Now, this is the historic level of contamination of DNA allowed. Uh, this was the amount allowed up to 1996. And we see that all of the contamination by the historic uh, tolerances have been uh, exceeded. Uh, these are the current FDA uh, guidelines here. Um, now, we also see that this scale is logarithmic, 10, 100, 1,000, uh, 10,000. So we see that these three marks here are actually quite significantly, with the Pfizer, quite significantly above the current uh, levels allowed um, for uh, SV40 contamination, DNA contamination. Now, the other thing we noticed about the levels of contamination that were or are allowed is that they seem to be going up. More contamination seems to be allowed. Let me just uh, give you some of the figures on that. So FDA WHO guidelines are getting lenient. Now, in 1986, and I think up to 1996, the allowed amount was uh, the allowed amount of DNA contamination was 10 picograms per dose. 10 picograms per dose. Now, a picogram is a thousandth of a nanogram. So, um, in other words, the amount of DNA permitted uh, was increased by three orders of magnitude. <laughs> it, was, it was increased from 10 picograms up to 10 nanograms. And 10 nanograms, of course, is 10,000 picograms. So the allowed amount of uh, DNA contamination in uh, 1996 was increased by a factor of 1,000. And um, D David said this, it's based on uh, speculative calculations for naked DNA. And of course, remember, these guidelines are for naked DNA, not the DNA that is in the lipid nanoparticles. And we've noticed that the DNA in the lipid nanoparticles can transfect cells a hundred times more efficiently than the naked DNA that these guidelines were designed for. And for some strange reasons that I certainly don't understand, uh, he also taught us that in 2003, plasma DNA-based vaccines were given privileged status. So um, for some reason, the, the, um, the amounts of contamination didn't seem to count quite as much. So all quite strange, really. And then um, he showed us this graph as well here. So this is a, a graph of DNA contamination here. Maybe if we zoom into this one a bit, we can see the levels there, the Irish vials and the Canadian vials and the permitted amount. But then if we look at this graph actually here, this is the same graph, but in, in logarithmic terms. So remember there, for that's 10, that's, 10,000, that's 100,000. So this is massively over the permitted line here. Uh, these would be the historic uh, amounts, 1986, I think, up until 1996, of 10 picograms per dose, which means that all these levels of contamination are way, way higher. And of course, remember that these levels of contamination were designed for naked DNA before the lipid nanoparticle bound DNA and its increased potential for transfection uh, were uh, fully developed. It's just uh, an incredible uh, difference. Um, a thousand times more contamination is now allowed. But even allowing for that, when you can see here that that, that, that figure there is 10,000, that's 100,000. So we can see that that's about 90,000. If this was on a linear scale, it'd be something sticking up like a, like a skyscraper. So um, really quite concerning overall. Firstly, that so much is still being detected in the latest vials of vaccine that are being produced. The manufacturers don't seem to have got their act together to clean up the amount of DNA from the E. coli contamination in their vaccines. And by now, it would be surprising if they didn't know about it. And yet the latest vaccines, it's still there because we see here that the latest vaccines that David tested, Dr. David Speaker tested with the JN1s, 
and we still see that has got that's got very high levels of contamination and yet we are still injecting in this into human beings which confuses me somewhat now uh dr speaker closed off with telling us about an injection of truth conference and i'm putting the link to that there uh, there'll be video available uh, from that pretty soon and he also told us about the david uh, declaration which i'll put the link to as well the david declaration embodies uh, the many voices of the cancelled scientists and physicians who stood up against government mandates since the start of the pandemic. Now, David is included in this because he's producing high quality scientific work. It's been turned down already by four major scientific journals without, without, without sending his work for peer review first. The editors have rejected his work, apparently a priori. Why didn't the editors send it for peer review? Or were these four editors so brilliant they didn't need to do that? Let's just go on with what, what this says here. Uh, David Speaker saying, I am honoured to be part of this important and courageous declaration that calls for a return to evidence-based medicine return to evidence-based medical science and monitoring on mRNA technology and recognition and support for the vaccine injured. It is my desire that this, this declaration stands as a beacon for Australia and the world because it originated in Australia, providing a framework to hold governments to account. Wouldn't that be nice if governments were held to account? That would be nice, wouldn't it? And allowed, allowing humanity to heal. As scientists and physicians, we endeavour to restore integrity to the medical and scientific fields and freedom to the people that we swore to serve. That's motherhood and apple pie, isn't it? I don't know there's much to disagree with there, really. And he also shared this. This is from the Northern Group Letter of Concern uh, from the Northern Group. Uh, and again, I'll put the link for this. And... Um, here we read, notice of extreme concern about COVID-19, modified mRNA vaccine safety and quality to prime ministers and governing bodies in the Nordic and Baltic countries and the United Kingdom. Excessive levels of residual DNA identified in Australian samples and as we've seen in other samples, confirming data from France, Germany, Canada, we've seen Canada and Irish samples as well, uh, confirming data from France, Germany, Canada and the USA and the USA the introduction of foreign DNA into cells via lipid nanoparticles may damage human DNA leading to genomic instability cancer and extremely serious conditions unless of course proved otherwise if the governing bodies and the governments prove otherwise show us the data that data is reviewed by our scientists and agreed to be genuine. Then, of course, we will retract these concerns. Until then, that is what we are at. Thank you, uh, David, so much for that.